History of St. Lucia, published December the 9th, 2017. Special characters are denoted as follows. And, beginning and ending single or double quotations. And, left and right parentheses. An M dash. Three consecutive periods. According to some, St. Lucia was first inhabited sometime between 1500 BC by the Siboni people, but there is not a lot of evidence of their presence on the island. The first proven inhabitants were the peaceful Arawaks, believed to have come from northern South America around 200 to 400 AD, as there are numerous archaeological sites on the island where specimens of the Arawaks' well-developed pottery have been found. There is evidence to suggest that these first inhabitants called the island Iuanalao, which meant land of the iguanas, due to the island's high number of iguanas. The more aggressive Caribs arrived around 800 AD, and seized control from the Arawaks by killing their men and assimilating the women into their own society. They called the island Huanrao, and later Huanora. Iuanalao, or there were iguanas are found this is the origin of the name of the Huanora International Airport in Vigsfort. The Caribs had a complex society, with hereditary kings and shamans. Their war canoes could hold more than 100 men and were fast enough to catch a sailing ship. They were later feared by the invading Europeans for their ferocity in battle. Part 1, 16th Century Christopher Columbus may have sighted the island during his fourth voyage in 1502, since he made landfall on Martinique, yet he does not mention the island in his log. Juan de la Cosa noted the island on his map of 1500, calling it El Falcon, and another island to the south, Las Agujas. A Spanish settler from 1511 mentions the island within the Spanish domain, and a globe in the Vatican made in 1520, shows the island as Sancta Lucia. A 1529 Spanish map shows S. Lucia. In the late 1550s the French pirate Francois Leclerc, known as Jam de Bois due to his wooden leg, set up a camp on Pigeon Island, from where he attacked passing Spanish ships. Part 2, 17th Century. In 1605, an English vessel called the Olive Blossom was blown off course on its way to Guyana, and the 67 colonists started a settlement on St. Lucia, after initially being welcomed by the Carib chief Anthony. By the 26th of September, 1605, only 19 survived, after continued attack by the Carib chief or Graumart, so they fled the island. English documents claim colonists from Bermuda settled the island in 1635, while a French letter of patent claims settlement on the 8th of March 1635 by Monsieur Pierre Belain de Snambouc, who was succeeded by his nephew Monsieur du Parquet. Thomas Warner sent Captain Judley with 300 to 400 Englishmen to establish a settlement at Praslin Bay but they were attacked over three weeks by Caribs, until the few remaining fled on 12 October. 1640. King Louis X II of France ceded the island to the French West India Company in 1642. In 1650, Captain Du Parquet and Monsieur Hull bought the island, sending de Ruslan and 40 Frenchmen to establish a fort on the La Tocquartapian headland. The French drove off an attempted English invasion in 1659, but allowed the Dutch to build a redoubt near Vieques Fort Bay in 1654. On the 6th of April 1663, the Caribs sold St. Lucia to Francis Willoughby, 5th Baron Willoughby of Parham, English governor of the Caribbean. He invaded the island with 1,100 English men and 600 Amerindians in five ships of war and 17 pirogues forcing the 14 French defenders to flee. However, the English colony succumbed to disease. The French took over again, but the English came back in June 1664 and retained possession until the 20th of October. 1665 when diplomacy gave the island back to the French. 
The English invaded again in 1665, but disease, famine and the Caribs forced their fleeing in January. 1666. The Treaty of Breda. 1667. Gave control of the island back to the French. The English raided the island in 1686, but relinquished all claims in a 1687 treaty and the 1697 treaty of Ryswick. Element or table removed. Unsuitable for speech. Part 3, 18th century. Both the British, with their headquarters in Barbados, and the French, centered on Martinique, found St. Lucia attractive after the sugar industry developed in 1763, and during the 18th century the island changed ownership or was declared neutral territory a dozen times, although the French settlements remained and the island was a de facto a French colony well into the 18th century. In 1722, the George I of Great Britain granted both St. Lucia and St. Vincent to John Montague, second Duke of Montague. He in turn appointed Nathaniel Euring, a merchant sea captain and adventurer, as deputy governor. Euring went to the islands with a group of seven ships, and established settlement at Petty Carimage. Unable to get enough support from British warships, he and the new colonists were quickly run off by the French. The 1730 census showed 463 occupants of the island, which included just 125 whites, 37 Caribs, 175 slaves, and the rest free blacks or mixed race. The French took control of the island in 1744, and by 1745, the island had a population of 3455, including 2,573 slaves. During the Seven Years' War Britain occupied St. Lucia in 1762, but gave the island back at the Treaty of Paris on 10 February 1763. Britain occupied the island again in 1778 after the Grand Battle of Cul de Sac during the American Revolutionary War. British Admiral George Rodney then built Fort Rodney from 1779 to 1782. By 1779, the island's population had increased to 19,230, which included 16,003 slaves working 44 sugar plantations. Yet, the Great Hurricane of 1780 killed about 800. By the time the island was restored to French rule in 1784, as a consequence of the Peace of Paris. 1783. 300 plantations had been abandoned and some thousand Maroons lived in the interior. In January, 1791, during the French Revolution, the National Assembly sent four commissaries to St. Lucia to spread the revolution philosophy. By August, slaves began to abandon their estates and Governor de Gimat fled. In December, 1792, Lieutenant Jean Baptiste Raymond de la Crosse arrived with revolutionary pamphlets, and the poor whites and free people of color began to arm themselves as patriots. On the 1st of February, 1793, France declared war on England and Holland, and General Nicolas Xavier de Ricard took over as governor. The National Convention abolished enslavement on the 4th of February, 1794, but St. Lucia fell to a British invasion led by Vice Admiral John Jervis on 1 April 1794. Mourn fortune became Fort Charlotte. Soon, a Patriot Army of Resistance, l'Armée Française and L'Espoir, began to fight back. Thus started the First Brigand War. A short time later, the British invaded in response to the concerns of the wealthy plantation owners, who wanted to keep sugar production going. On the 21st of February 1795, a group of rebels, led by Victor Hooks, defeated a battalion of British troops. For the next four months, a group of recently freed slaves known as the Brigands forced out not only the British army, but every white slave owner from the island. Colored slave owners were left alone, as in Haiti. 
the English were eventually defeated on June 19 and fled from the island. The royalist planters fled with them, leaving the remaining St. Lucians to enjoy. Lani de la Liberté. A year of freedom from slavery. Gaspard Goyrand, a Frenchman who was St. Lucia's commissary later became governor of St. Lucia and proclaimed the abolition of slavery. Goyrand brought the aristocratic planters to trial. Several lost their heads on the guillotine, which had been brought to St. Lucia with the troops. He then proceeded to reorganize the island. The British continued to harbor hopes of recapturing the island and in April 1796 Sir Ralph Abercrombie and his troops attempted to do so. Castries was burned as part of the conflict, and after approximately one month of bitter fighting the French surrendered at Mourne Fortune on 25 May. General Moe was elevated to the position of Governor of St. Lucia by Abercrombie and was left with 5,000 troops to complete the task of subduing the entire island. British Brigadier General John Moe was appointed military governor on 25 May 1796 and engaged in the Second Brigand War. Some brigands began to surrender in 1797 when promised they would not be returned to slavery. Final freedom and the end to hostilities came with emancipation in 1838. Part 4, 19th century. The 1802 Treaty of Amiens restored the island to French control, and Napoleon Bonaparte reinstated slavery. The British regained the island in June 1803, when Commodore Samuel Hood defeated French Governor Brigadier General Antoine Noakes. The island was officially ceded to Britain in 1814. Also in 1838, St. Lucia was incorporated into the British Windward Islands Administration, headquartered in Barbados. This lasted until 1885, when the capital was moved to Grenada. Part 5 20th century to 21st century. During the Battle of the Caribbean, a German U-boat attacked and sank two British ships in Castries Harbour on the 9th of March 1942. Increasing self-government has marked St. Lucia's 20th century history. A 1924 constitution gave the island its first form of representative government, with a minority of elected members in the previously all-nominated Legislative Council. Universal adult suffrage was introduced in 1951, and elected members became a majority of the council. Ministerial government was introduced in 1956, and in 1958 st. Lucia joined the short-lived West Indies Federation, a semi-autonomous dependency of the United Kingdom. When the Federation collapsed in 1962, following Jamaica's withdrawal, a smaller federation was briefly attempted. After the second failure, the United Kingdom and the six Windward and Leeward Islands. Grenada, St. Vincent, Dominica, Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis and Anguilla, and St. Lucia. Developed a novel form of cooperation called Associated Statehood. By 1957, bananas exceed sugar as the major export crop. As an associated state of the United Kingdom from 1967 to 1979, St. Lucia had full responsibility for internal self-government but left its external affairs and defense responsibilities to the United Kingdom. This interim arrangement ended on February 22, 1979, when St. Lucia achieved full independence. St. Lucia continues to recognize Queen Elizabeth II as titular head of state and is an active member of the Commonwealth of Nations. The island continues to cooperate with its neighbors through the Caribbean community and common market. CRICOM The East Caribbean Common Market ECCM And the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States OECS this recording is a derivative work from Wikipedia. For more information, please visit www.frogcast.org.